Good morning. Hey, we're going to have a hot day. It's about time. It's August, right? So, how is everybody today? Awesome. We have our picnic uh, scheduled for next month. We have the location. It's over the years, 21, 22 years, whatever the heck it is, it's ridiculous how long it's been. Uh, we've had our, our annual picnic in different locations. Oh, I know, it's like, oh. Um, and we recently, in the last few years, have been having it at Columbia Point. It's a perfect location, yes. right next to the river, right next to the restrooms. It's perfect. Yeah. So that's where it's going to be again this year. Do you have a date, Jan? It's September? It's the third Sunday. Third Sunday. OK, third Sunday in September. Be there or be square. Be the 15th. OK. Uh, 22nd. 22nd. Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, it is Sunday, yes. <laughs> no, it's Sunday. We always have it on Sunday after church. Or actually, we had, we had services there last year. That was really cool. We'll have to think about that one. We'll have to think about that. That was fun, though. Uh, more t shirts and sweatshirts. Um, who do you, what do you call a person who is happy on Monday? Retired. Retired. <laughs> what did you say? Weirdo. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> or retired. Um, and I'm not sure I really understand this. My sense of humor sometimes escapes even me. But they've got a stick person that's on fire and running, and it says, I tried it at home. No. Okay, yeah, perfect. I'm okay. glad. It's like, okay, I didn't get it either. All right. Okay, I know. Do not try this at home. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. One, one last one. I wasn't planning on going for a run today, but those cops came out of nowhere. <laughs> so. All right. We do have a couple of patron saints by the name of George, 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 George Carlin, and John Lennon. <laughs> okay. And John said. Uh, you are not your emotions. You have emotions. You can master them. So, and George, I never joined the Boy Scouts. I don't trust any organization that has a handbook. <laughs> All righty. Um, we're going to have any other stuff going on other than the calendar. Where's it? Do I, I don't even have an August calendar. We have stuff going on here all the time. That's the one thing, I think when Jan and I started, the, it is one of the things that when Stair in the church that, um, that's great, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> is that's the one thing we always recognize at church buildings is they never were utilized except on Sundays and occasionally on Wednesdays. But that's the one thing we wanted. We wanted this building used. It's used. It's a little bit less in the summertime, but it's still used quite a bit. So, uh, Shigong, every Sunday morning in the back. Um, if you've never done Shigong, come a little bit early. It's, very, it's quite enlightening. It's wonderful. Uh, International Forgiveness Day. I love it. Tuesday is Wiggle Your Toes Day. Mm, mm, mm. Nothing better than on a sandy beach. Yeah. Wiggling your toes and then just slightly more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Or the grass, too. Or the, or the grass, too. Yeah. Um, Book Lover's Day on Friday. Actually, it's a, sl it's a slim week, but that's okay. <laughs> Happens every once in a while. All right. Things that make you go, hmm. I have not been afraid of excess. Excess on occasion is exhilarating. It prevents moderation from acquiring the deadening effect of a habit. <laughs> I like Artificial manners vanish the moment the natural passions are touched. And if we escape punishment for our vices, why should we complain if we are not rewarded for our virtues? Good point. Good point. So, all right. <laughs> Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. What, have, what I have done is due to patient thought, Sir Isaac Newton. And to endure is greater than to dare. 
And batteries. Oh, we've got, gosh, people are bringing in dead batteries. That's great. So we've got another, another good, good starting bag of batteries to recycle. You know, we re always try to do that. We've had recycle bins, you know, from the start. We actually were awarded um, third place from the city of Richland. It's been a few years ago now and designated some, yeah, we, we were doing a bunch of good things at the time. We don't do any of those anymore. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So we had tried everything, you know, from bulbs and, I mean, done all kinds of things to be more socially adequate. Thank you. Um, the dot over the letter I is called a tittle. A, a tittle also means iota or little bit, as in, I don't care one tittle. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I know this is really, really important for most people, all this stuff I'm reading. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, but we do this for a reason. You know, so many people come in to a building like this, especially if they're new or something, aren't sure what to expect, and they're kind of like, I don't know, you know uh, peace, there's weird stuff around here, I don't know what to expect. And we try to do this to help people have a good time. I mean, who said you can't have fun at church? Yeah. What's that all about? So, all right. Um, what color? Oh, there we go. What do you call a male ladybug? I don't know. We could, we could. What hair color do they put on the driver's license of a bald man? <laughs> I don't know. When dog food is new and improved tasting, who tests it? <laughs> Why didn't Noah swap those two mosquitoes? Exactly. Why do you need a driver's license to buy liquor when you can't drink a drive? Why isn't phonetic spelled the way it sounds? <laughs> Why are there interstates in Hawaii? Why are there flotation devices in the seats of planes instead of parachutes? And have you ever imagined a world without hypothetical situations? And how does the good guy who drives the snowplow get to work? I wondered that one. Oh, hey, I think actually I think that could be true. Yes. Oh, we have eggs in the back. Yay, eggs. You know, we all, they're, are they $4? $4 for a dozen? Oops, I'm not supposed to say that. Sorry, that's not on YouTube. Forget that. <laughs> but we do have eggs in back. And so. they're good. And they're good. Uh, three friends from a local congregation were asked, when you're in your casket and friends and congregation members are mourning over you, what would you like them to say? Well, Artie said, well, I'd like them to say I was a wonderful husband, a fine spiritual leader, and a great family man. Eugene commented, I'd like them to say I was a wonderful teacher, a servant of God, who made a huge difference in people's lives. Don said, I'd like them to say, look, he's moving! <laughs> All right. Enough faulty raw. Let's sing a song. And the song actually is Josh Groban. So what, no, it's not. It's one clear voice. Oh. That's, um. And he took one. I said, no, that's the one I needed. And so he gave it to me. And it says, um, connect to the divine. <laughs> so I think, I think that was appropriate. His was relax and let go. Yes. Um, mine was in that moment of stillness and knowing as for your truth. The song was saying, and if I'm very still, I will hear. Could you say that again on the microphone? Because they couldn't hear anything on the That's camera. That's necessarily true. I've got a double action going on. Do you? Yeah. I don't know. We'll just get it. Okay. So mine was, in this moment of stillness and knowing, ask for your truth. And this line in the song was, and if I'm very still, I will hear one true voice. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Just had to share. I'm glad you did share. Fun stuff, I think. <coughs> so. Let's do one for the YouTube people. This one's for you. <laughs> hmm, I think this one. This one, this one, this one, this one. 
This one says, release yourself from old wounds. Wow. Did everybody get one? Everybody got theirs? Was yours as powerful as mine? I don't know. <coughs> Very cool stuff. Yes. Um, anyway, you can imagine what the whole message is. If just one little blurb can get you fired up. So, speaking of fired up. <laughs> oh, good Lord help you all today. <laughs> So what we've been talking about, we've been talking about uh, some specific energies. Peace, vitality, courage, uh, expanded awareness, and compassion. And how those were energy flows that we can step into, receive that energy, and it'll balance and help our lives, right? So I've <clears throat> been pondering on that. And I've been, for some reason, keep being drawn back to peace. And so I was reading another little article somewhere that somebody was, had been talking about their experience of peace. And then at the bottom of that, there was this Bible verse that I have never understood. Didn't think it was understandable. I thought, you know, what the heck is this even here for? So <laughs> I noticed that this was the Bible verse attached to what they were just saying. And I said, so what the heck is that supposed to mean? Said out loud to myself in my living room, looked outside and went, boom, this huge awareness hit and was like, OMG, really, OMG. And so all week I've been trying to figure out, okay, how does that, and what, what does this all mean? And how does it, now how do I use that? So trying to find words to the things that I received. So that's what we want to talk about today, but I want to start with making it applicable. Because if it's this beautiful, wonderful spiritual truth, and you can't use it, what the heck good is it? Right? If it ain't practical, we're just monkeying around in our brain. Who needs that? So what are some things, we talked last week about some things that disrupt our peace, or that keep us from peace. <clears throat> Along with that, sometimes there's circumstances that generate for us pronouncements. Pronouncements that, are, that happen because of an excruciating event. Like we could say, I'll never trust again. So what are some, what are some things that we say to ourselves that are usually spoken with vehemence? <laughs> And we believe them as true. Whether they're true or not, they might be true in that moment. I'll never trust again. Well, you know, the truth is maybe that person is untrustworthy. Or maybe there are some people you can trust some, and other people you can trust more. And it's imperative that I trust myself, primarily. Maybe that's the truth. But we get this, I'll never trust again. And then we can't trust. Because it's a pronouncement we made, and we believe it to be true. That is, it's not safe to trust anybody anytime. So we lock ourselves down, right? So what are some other things that we say to ourselves? Yes? I'll never be good enough. Not good enough. I think that's a common theme for a lot of us. What else? Not smart enough? Well, it kind of falls in that same, not smart enough. How about this one? can't. What's another one? Yes? I'll never be healthy. I'll never be healthy. I'm trying to think of a shorter version of that. <laughs> as good as it gets. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put it down and we'll, we'll work with it. And the really cool thing is, I love this, is because whenever we say a never, we know we're in that judgment space. We know we're in that locked down space. The shoulda, coulda, woulda, oughta, got in, must, have to, always, and nevers. So anything that we have said to ourselves in those is this locked down energy. So what else? I'll never change. It'll, it'll never change? I'll never change. I'll never change. Well, that could apply for a lot of stuff. It'll never change. Let's, let's do it'll, and then that'll incorporate it'll.
a tittle of a little. It'll. But us. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. Love that. That's a T. Cool. Cool. So can you think, okay, maybe you're too shy to speak out in front of everybody, um, but maybe you can think of things that's running in your background all the time. These are like programs that we set and forget, and they're constantly running in our background, constantly floating in, in our awareness, but they're in the background. And it's like any computer program, one of these days it crashes because that one takes precedence. And when it crashes, then we just shut down. We get logged down, shut down. We can't function. We can't move into what we want to do or take the next step because we're stuck. We get stuck. So whether you have one of these or one similar to that, um, that's what we want to talk about today. That's the energy that we're talking about today. So I want us to take us back to peace and talk about peace because peace is the key to all of this. Peace is the root of all of this. Um, <clears throat> and this is the peace that passes understanding. So let me ref Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't mind me. In uh, John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Peace. This peace is not the absence of struggle. Because guess what? We're human. And we humans create struggle because we can. It's part of being human. It's part of how we learn. It's part of how we grow. And it's a part of how we just navigate this physical corporal being. So peace is not the absence of struggle. Nor is peace this la 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 la, everything's just fine. No, that's Pollyanna uh, oblivious. We don't want to be that. But this peace is this abiding energy that sustains us through difficulty. Um, I remember years and years ago, I've never seen it since, but I saw this picture, a painting, of someone who had painted this sweet little bird sitting in a, cave, in a little crevice of a rock, storm raging around it, and this little bird is just going, hmm, look, there's a storm. And the title of the, of the picture was Peace. <coughs> That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Life is not going to give you absence of struggle. Divine source is not going to give you absence of struggle because then you wouldn't grow, then you wouldn't be who you are. And it's, it's not that divine source is going to send struggle to you to punish you or, or any of that sort of thing. It's just a part of life. And if we can move into a state of being where we recognize that, oh, there's struggle happening, but I can be at peace about that. I can recognize and notice that I can be at peace about that. That's where the power is. This is really powerful stuff. So I want to read to you what I was reading. <laughs> oh, Lord. So I was reading from this little Unity book, Daily Word. <clears throat> and it was way back, June 18th. <laughs> you know, I just pick a day, any day. It doesn't matter. Just because they say it's June 18th doesn't mean I have to only read this on June 18th. <laughs> Do you get the idea that I really don't like rules very well. <laughs> Just evidence of that. I don't know. You, you may relate to that. You may not. I don't know. <clears throat> so, on this particular day, it says, I envision and affirm peace within myself and throughout the world. Oh, God, don't we, don't we need that in the world today? <clears throat> At challenging times, I turn to Matthew for the reassuring words Jesus shared with his disciples. For God, all things are possible. And there's only one presence and one power in the universe, God omnipotence. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the kingdom of heaven, not a geographical location, but a state, state of consciousness. And one of the things that we've been talking about is this higher awareness, this higher consciousness. I enter a heavenly consciousness when I quiet my mind, let go of any attachment to appearances, 
and concentrate on spirit within. I deny the permanence of situations. Remember the law of impermanence? Things change. Things come, they go. It, and we don't have to take it personally. It's just how it is. It's just life. I practice the presence of God. In doing this, I experience peace. Through unwavering faith, I know that peace in the world begins with me. Oh, that's really wonderful. Doesn't that feel really good? And then here's the, vo- the verse they threw in with it. I will give you the keys to the, of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16, 19. And I looked at my front room, and I said, what the heck is that supposed to mean? Looked outside. What that means is, when we have this higher level of awareness, we can unlock this kingdom of higher consciousness for ourselves, for others. We can unlock, we can unlock what's been locked down. A lot of us, I don't know about you or about how it works in your life, but I get locked down in my preconceived notions and in the lies that I've told myself so often I think they're true. I'm not good enough. Yeah, I am. I may not be good enough to do that task, but I'm good enough to do this task. And what am I comparing myself to? That's the lie. The lie is I have to be perfect or I'm not good enough. Well, if I look at that and bring this higher conscious awareness into that, I unlock that. And what happens when we unlock this stuff is that this being locked down now opens and the universe, God, higher power, spirit, whatever that is for you, now can gift me, you, all of us, with what is the opposite of what we've been locked down about. All of that good stuff now can flow to us. If we are locked down in a concept, the good can't flow because we've bound it. If we bind it on earth in our willingness or lack thereof, then the universe is bound. It cannot bless us. But if we unlock that, then we're free. We're free to receive all the goodness that we would like to have in our lives. So what's locking you down? What's holding you back? Have you got one? Have you got one to look at? Have you got several? Can we, do you have any more we want to add to our list? Yes. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Anybody else? I'll never understand. You know, I sure thought that about this verse. I'll never understand what that means. I don't know what that means. Why did he he even write that? It's amazing. The understanding wasn't something that I figured it out. It was given. Maybe I never would understand. But I have this beautiful experience where it was gifted to me. That's grace. Yes, ma'am. Why not me? Why not me? Let's just squeeze that right up here. Why not me? Why not me? Okay. Yeah. What about I'll never finish? Like if you work on a project or something? Well, that may be true. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, <laughs> can I just leave it with I'll never? Yeah. Because some things are not meant to finish. <laughs> it's an undaunting task. Okay. So, so what, what might be locking you down instead of I'll never finish is... Um, um, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, that's why I say move is a four letter word, not to be spoken in polite company. Do it once, get done. Some, you had one? Not worthy. Not worthy. Okay. Oh, I'd love to just talk about each one of these all by themselves. Get them.
Get him done. Um, I give up. I give up. Okay. I love these. Yes. Can you repeat the tell tell us what the verse was and repeat it? Sure, the- sure I can. The verse that <clears throat> matter of fact, I'll just read it again because it's there's more to it than just that. <clears throat> Not that one. <laughs> okay. So the story. Let me give you the backstory to this. No, I'm just gonna read the backstory. Um. I am in Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 19. Let me just tell you the backstory. So the backstory is <laughs> Jesus was saying, Who do you think, who do people say I am? And so people say, Oh, this person said you're a prophet, and those people say whatever, um, that you're uh, Elijah reborn, uh, reincarnated. And Jesus said, Who do you say I am? And Peter answered him and said, You're Christ. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus blessed him about that, and he said, um, skipping down to verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. And the keys that he's talking about are, I think, these things we've been talking about over the last few weeks here, about peace. Let me start with peace. John 14. Jesus again says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. That's this peace. That's being in this alcove and noticing. See, there's this, when we get into that place of peace, now this awakens this Uh, expansive awareness where we can notice. We don't take it personally. We don't have to be distraught. We don't have to agonize. We don't have to anguish. We can just notice stuff. And it's from this powerful place of awareness, then we have vitality. Um, Vitality. Oh, where are you? I marked you, I thought. Oh, it is marked. It's right there. And this is more Bible than I normally do, but this is like really deep stuff, so hang in there. If you don't like the Bible, I'm sorry. Um, For you formerly of darkness, but now you are the, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. That's his vitality. Have you ever worked on a project and you just get fired up about it? You know, how many people paint? When you're in the middle of painting, do you feel dread, worry? No. How many people write? Okay. When you're in the middle of writing, do you feel stressed and discouraged? No. I don't even feel cold. You don't feel cold? I don't know. You can wake up and go, I'm freezing. Because you've been (laughs) absorbed in what you were doing. How many people um, besides feel work on cars or do uh, mechanical projects? Yeah. Somebody else. <laughs> You're only. There's another one over there. So what are some other things that we do that we get we lose ourselves in? What are sewing? Oh, see, so sewing's not my thing. So thank you for bringing that up. Sewing is one of those things where, oh dear God, it's got a hole in it. I have to sew it. So it's not a fun thing for me. But bless you for those that do that. Crochet. I know Lynn, who was here earlier, she crochets. Reading, reading. Can you get lost in a book? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or crafts, yeah. Me- music, great one, yes. Whether you cooking? Yes, for people that you love. Oh, for people that when you love. <laughs> when you're in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a great long while, that does hit. Yes, I can get that one. <laughs> but you see, when we're in that state of being, there's no struggle. Oh, yeah, maybe you struggle because you can't find the ingredients. You can't find the right word for just now. Or what color am I going to put there? But it's a different kind of, of struggle, different kind of energy that you're putting forth. 
but the, the fear and the dread and all that stress is gone. It vanishes because you're in this vitality. And it takes a moment to get into that vitality, doesn't it? Have you ever started to paint or started to write and you're just like, not done there. Okay, I may as well go sew something because I can't write. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> But it does, it takes a minute because we have to get into the state of peace. Peace is this really powerful foundation. And then from this peace, we move into this energy of this enthusiastic flow. And then from that enthusiastic flow, we move into a state of courage. Courage. I've got courage here. <coughs> This is the one that was alluded to in the, in the writing earlier. These things I have spoken to you, Jesus, sorry, Matthew, uh, John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Can't find peace? Go to Jesus. This is your go to Jesus call. Okay, if you're not a Jesus fan, go to what makes you into that spiritual connectedness. In the world you have tribulations. It's part of living. It's part of life. But take courage. I've overcome the world. So from this place of peace and vitality, then we have courage. And this courage grants us the ability to see things differently, which leads us to this expanded awareness, this expansive uh, consciousness. Matthew 16, 19. It's the kingdom of ha keys to the kingdom of heaven. I already talked about that. And then... When you have this expanded awareness, you can see things from a different perspective, then you can notice, oh, look, I'm saying I'm overwhelmed again. I'm seeing that about myself. There's a lot to do here. You can, be, you can notice, oh, I, I feel like giving up. I can notice that feeling. But when you have this courage and, and this vitality and this peace, and you notice that, then we shift into this higher level of energy, which is compassion and love. And from that, we can do anything because we're not gifted with, we are, we're not running on our own energy. We're gifted with all this energy from spirit, all this awareness, all this connectedness. And there's a verse I want to read you about that really quickly. I already did. Did I already read this one? You are the light of the world. Oh, no, I had another one. <laughs> Sorry, I, get too, I just get too excited. Just stop. Just stop being so silly. Okay. So as children of light. First John, chapter 1, verse 5. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. There is no darkness. If there is darkness in your life. It didn't come from God. And God can be your way out of that. Same book, different verse. <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 8. God is love. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So when, full circle again now, so when we are in this place of love, there is no fear. What do you have when there's no fear? Courage. What do you have when there's no fear? You have this expanded awareness. We can look at things from a different perspective. And from that, then we have this vitality that we can share with the world right? So let's look at our big things that block us up and snag us down. And let's shift them. Let's loose them. We've been bound to them. We've been locked down with them. So let's unlock them. All right, ready for this? So pick your favorite. <laughs> you can do this with more than one thing, but pick your favorite thing that hangs you up. <clears throat> you know, my, my favorite thing used to be no one will help me until People help me, and then that was just a lie. And I really got to look at that, and that doesn't hang me up so much anymore. I'll never be healthy. That's kind of a big one for me. <clears throat> so, matter of fact, that is a big one for me. So let's take a look at that. And when you say that, whatever it is to yourself, notice how you feel. Notice it. 
Don't try to smoosh it down. Don't try to discount it. Don't try to ignore it. Notice it. You're bringing this higher level of awareness to it. Okay? So notice the statement you're saying, I'll never be healthy. Okay? Or I'll, I quit. I give up. Got it? You're locked down with that. Now you have the keys here to unlock that. So reach into your energy field with your palm down. Oh, just do this. I know it's goofy. Just do it. Trust me. Palm down. And turn it over. And now what's left? What's left? A whole different energy set. So instead of, I'm not good enough, it's like, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Right? I can do... I can, I can get help. I don't have to be enough. But we can't even conceive of that if we're locked down with I'm not good enough. Right? Make sense? What else happened? Anything else happened for you when, yes? The words that I was locked into, they just disappeared. I couldn't actually think them. You can't think them anymore. <laughs> and here's the thing. So all of the evidence that you've been compiling, you, us, we, all of us, we compile evidence that prove this to us. Oh, look, you failed again. You're not good enough. Well, that's just a lie because the universe has, you have locked the universe into proving that to you. But as soon as you unlock that, now the universe can prove to you how wonderful you are. How cool is that? Until then, you locked it down. And now it's open. You're open to something else. I can't. What happened when we unlocked on, I can't? I can. I can. And maybe even it's just, I wonder if I can. What if I could? Who could help me? I might could think of something different. Why do I have to do that thing anyway? By noticing and being aware, now the universe can give us what will bless us. Why not me? What happened when why not me shifted? I got the same thing that you said, I can do all things. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Why not me? Yeah. And I changed the way you say it. Huh? You changed the way you say it. You changed the way you say it. Why not me too? Why yeah. Not? Why not? Yeah. So why not? So why not? Attitude. <laughs> Love that little attitude. A little sass on that one. <clears throat> what happened to I'm overwhelmed? Underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. I'm underwhelmed. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe it takes me two years. Whatever. Who says I have to have it done next week? Yeah. What did you say, Roy? I can handle it. I can handle it. I got this. I got this. I'll never be healthy. You know what came through for me on that one? The vitality I have is more than enough. The vitality I have is perfect for me right now. Speak out of yourself that you're getting healthy. Say what? Speak out of yourself that you are getting healthy. <coughs> so healthy, again, is a, the, our lack thereof. Being unhealthy has made me stop. I had to rest this week. I want to do stuff. Stuff I want to do. Okay? Well, I didn't get to. So you know what I did? I read. <laughs> I read. There's a blessing. And I couldn't find the blessing when I was locked down. But as soon as that unlocked, it was like, oh, look at the blessing in this. And you know what? I feel better. I feel better. What about the not worthy? <coughs> what happened to not worthy? Here's the foot for not worthy. Because sometimes it's hard to get, all week I've worked on the concepts of this, trying to find words to them. So don't worry if you didn't get the words because you probably got the feeling and the concept. But here's what happens to I'm not worthy. I find worthy work. I find worthy things to do. 
I apply worth to everything I do. Make sense? Changes everything. Changes everything. I am valuable. I am valuable. And you know, it's really powerful to shift those things, is it not? Any others we have question on that we're trying to find words for that have eluded us yet? Because words are kind of a key thing. I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, what's... It's not our list. I don't want to. Well, you know, I don't want to is a really big thing to look at because maybe we're trying to force ourselves to do something that's not worthy. So looking at that and unlocking that would be what I choose to do is worthy. And then you can choose or not choose. It's all about choice. Or it's and an if, opportunity. It's an opportunity, yeah. And I, but there's no guilt or shame in any of that. Any of that. Any other questions before we move on? <laughs> I love this stuff. Jess, but all of these things, they're built on choice. Yes. But when we're locked down, we don't see that there's a choice. That's how it is. Yeah. Unless there's no face, choice. Unless you face it. Well, face yeah. it or notice it. Yeah, notice it fresh. Because just saying, well, I'll never think that again, you know, feelings and thoughts bubble up. And every time it does, we just unlock it again. Because it's just an old habituated pattern. Remember I showed you the video of the brain? And it has those uh, neural receptors. And we get hardwired into thinking something is true, whether it's true or not. And when we have that hardwired energy, it takes energy to dissipate that. We have to think a new thought a lot. as So as this is being built, that dissipates and goes away. And that's not our go-to response to life. Some of these things we're talking about, this is our go-to response that is almost hardwired. So having a new pattern of thought and focusing on that, it'll still come up, but we just notice it. This higher level of awareness allows us to notice it and disempower it. When we're locked into something, we don't have power, this has power over us. And that's not how Divine Source wants us to live. Divine Source wants us to live empowered. Any other questions or comments about that? Yes? When we're willing. Mm -hmm. To see it differently. Mm -hmm. That's when the higher power, whatever you want to call it, the. Speak up. Speak up louder. <clears throat> or take it. The Holy microphone. Spirit does it for us when we make a choice. Yes, I am going to bring this into the light. I, I want to do something different. And when that happens, you have the awakening, oh, that's not who I am, and you're released. Exactly. The letting go of who I am, <laughs> there's a saying in the Course in Miracles that I put all over my house this week <laughs> that says that I... I choose the love of God instead of pain. It's very simple. When I'm You unlock that. And we are perfect, whole and complete. When we say that we are only human, that's the ego talking and the ego <laughs> is doesn't exist in the sense that it has control over us. That's not who we are. So your point is my point is, is that if you focus on, if I focus on who I really am, I am perfect, whole, and complete in God's eyes, and I have never done anything wrong, and it's all, all okay. And I put energy into that, instead of stirring the pot of the ego, it's helped me so much more than to try to, because the mind cannot figure it out. <laughs> Because it's an ego, and it I will understand. take you down the pits every time. So here's the bottom line. When we feel those feelings or thoughts percolate up, 
move into a state of peace. Peace. Just be. Just be. And from that state of peace, access this enthusiastic vitality for life. I'm alive. I'm real. I'm, I'm doing the deal. I'm looking at this stuff. I'm healing. I'm growing. And then we have the courage to look at it differently and notice. And from that place of noticing, we move into a higher state of love. And when we're in that state of love and compassion, where does the love and compassion shine first? On ourselves. Because that's who we are. That's who we are. And that's what we're getting back to. This other stuff is just lies that we've created to keep us safe and keep us small. And that's okay, because sometimes we need to be safe and we need to be small. But if you're ready to be be who you really are, you don't need to be small anymore. <laughs> you don't need to be perfect anymore. You get to be what you are, you just love. And let that love shine through, and from that, then we can bring a whole new awareness into our life and into the world. Because guess what? It starts with us. We're changing the world right here, right now, by moving into this state of awareness. And we're unlocking a ton of stuff. Now, there's more to be said about locking it in another day. So, Mr. Phil, if you would join me up front. Another day. Okay. Another day. <laughs> I'm sure I'm the only one that has tons of stuff crammed in their Bible, right? Or not. It's a great placeholder for all kinds of things that maybe you don't. You can't use it for one thing, use it for another. Communion. This is a physical manifestation of that connectedness we have with divine source. Unleavened bread are these little crackery things over here. Uh, animal crackers, if you want to honor a Native American pathway. And in the cup is gluten-free. So whatever works for you works for us. Would you join us in prayer, please? Loving spirit of light. Gosh, we don't know what we're doing. So enlighten us. Bring us more awareness. Bring us these energies. Help us to unlock grace. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> As that continues around, sticky on the bottom. Join us in prayer again, please. Loving, of spirit, loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life. All of it. All of it. And help us to notice life on a whole nother level. Bless us in all that we do. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh no. <laughs> We're in trouble now. First of all, I'd love to thank the person that put the